slowly we were coming back to Bombay and doing a headphone connect app event after almost two and a half years. And it's amazing to be able to come back and meet all of y'all and do this again after such a long time. Uh, I can tell you that we've been all waiting to do this for a long, long time. So firstly, from everybody here at Headphone Zone, thank you so much for coming and spending time with us this Sunday. Uh, can I get a very quick show of hands? How many of you have been to three Headphone Connects or more in the past? Raise your hands. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. <laughs> okay, eight. All right. Uh, these guys are, and can you raise your hands again? So these guys are serious veterans of Headphone Connect. They know exactly what's going on. Um, can I have a show of hands? How many of you guys have been to two Headphone Connects? <laughs> All right. That's just two of y'all. Omkar, you have to have been more than two, man. Just okay. All right. Okay. How many of y'all are coming for your very first Headphone Connect? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now, to give you guys a little bit of a backstory on how Headphone Connect started, back in 2015, we had just started selling expensive headphones at the time. Uh, and expensive back then meant very different from what expensive means these days. And we were wondering how do we get people to listen to some of these headphones and actually get them. So somebody suggested, hey, why don't you take these headphones to an audiophile meetup and have people listen to it. If they like the sound, they'll buy it. And they're like, oh, I don't really know if we have any audiophile meetups in India. So they said, even better, why don't you just host your own? So that's exactly what we did. We were a very, very small team back then. Uh, my two co-founders, can you guys raise your hand? Uh, that's Avika, that's Kamna out there. And our wonderful alumni from Headphone Zone, thank you. So we sent out a very simple email to everybody uh, that we knew in Bombay and said, guys, please just come with your headphones and we'll pay for the beer and pizza. <laughs> but uh, come and spend the afternoon. And uh, some people who were there for our very first headphone connect meet up over here. Mr. Ali Pardiwala is right here. Mr. Omkar Chandan right there. Uh, they were there for the very first headphone connect back in 2015. Um, and when we held that event, we realized that, hey, this is something really special because it builds a community that that you guys see today and that you are all a part of. And since then, we've done 26 Headphone Connect events across wow. India. Wow. The 26th one being held just two weeks ago in Bangalore. Um, and we're very, very happy to have come back to Bombay. Bombay was where it all started. This is, I think, our sixth or the seventh Headphone Connect that we're doing in Bombay. Um, and we're doing 15 more Headphone Connects this year across India. We're in Hyderabad two weeks from now, two weeks after that Chennai, two weeks after that Delhi, two weeks after that Pune and so on and so forth. And we'll be back hopefully in Bombay doing another show again in I think November or December. Um, now, the idea of Headphone Connect is a very simple one. Most of y'all are some way or the other what I call audiophiles and what an audiophile is very simply is someone who loves music and I'm sure we all do but also cares very very deeply about the way that music sounds. This is something that a lot of people don't really understand. Now the only way to explain this to you is I want you to visualize your favorite track. For me it's an AR Rahman track from the 90s okay I absolutely love that era I love the music and if you're able to listen to that music on a crappy headphone, on a crappy speaker, and you're able to visualize the pain it brings you to listen to music like that, then in my definition, you're already an audiophile because you care deeply about the way the music sounds. Hi, Sean. This is not your first headphone connect. So how's it going? Yeah, it's always, uh, I, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's gone from strength to strength. I remember back in, 2015, you guys had the first one, I think, and uh, from just like one headphone connected in Bombay to many cities and at a bigger and better scale, more products. It's an audiophile's uh, dream come true. Great. Uh, do you have any favorites yet from whatever you heard so far? Ah, uh, favorites is a tough word. You know, the kid in the candy store can't be asked about favorites. He, he does. Uh, he is picky, but uh, they're, they're, I won't say favorites. Each 
There's so many elements to choose from. Um, I went through the entire selection of the IEMs, started from the humble two or entry level right till the three lakh and all. Each table had an interesting, uh, uh, it's an interesting offering for for the budget and the sound experience. I really like the uh, the people presenting the headphones at every table. They, need, they really seem to know their stuff. I really like that. They, uh, they're knowledgeable. They are aware. They're laid back in a good way. They're calm, and they could engage very well with me and the people around me, uh, trying to figure out what we want to listen to, what our budget is, kind of music, and that's that's a very healthy atmosphere overall. Uh, I did like, since the IEMs, I did like the uh, Phoenix and the Elysium from Visioneers. Campfire's uh, Andromeda was also pretty interesting. And uh, I mostly like listening to something with uh, anywhere from flat reference to balanced. It's a tricky aspect because most don't get it right. They say reference or balance, but they just completely miss out on the base. Whereas I'm looking for more detail, a good sound stage, a good detail, a good separation. So yeah, I'm a little strict when it comes to my demands from audio and I think these brands did pretty well in uh, delivering. Well, was there a standout DAC or headphone for you that you'd like to talk about? Um, definitely. I mean, the latest one, I uh, was uh, sitting on the person, I think, the nice shiny not shiny but very transparent and looks wise definitely it's a killer I, I love uh, uh, units that have that transparent appeal to them there was it reminds me of you know the 90s where you had the phones with the plastic cases uh, looks apart I paired it with the I think was the Meze um, not sure the name An Elite Elite yes the Meze Elite and I think people had to pull me away from the unit because I was hogging it. Uh, first impressions, uh, it's a fantastic unit. The DAC is, is absolutely beautiful. And uh, I don't say this easily because I literally put it through the ringer. Not, sorry, literally, but I, I listen to a wide variety of music. So from indecipherable death metal to Hindustani classic to everything in between. So, and I put it through the ringer. I made, I listened to some old terrible recordings of Cannibal Corpse to uh, Lassertine Force, which is like a decent band, good recording. And uh, then I heard some other metal numbers. I heard AR Rehman, I heard uh, Bombay Jayashree, I heard this fantastic uh, Icelandic composer who just was has a huge wonderful body of sound and what I really like was the DAC kept pace effortlessly so and uh, each detail was uh, given proper attention to I could I could hear everything everywhere the detail was there the sound stage was set there I was listening to some EDM numbers so the bass kicked in well where it wanted to and the bass wasn't muddy where the bass was not required, it was contained. Uh, the mids were not uh, powered, the highs were happy in their own stratosphere. So it was, I mean, I was smiling. Uh, I think that's the best uh, judge of any equipment that for me is when I'm listening to it and I smile, that's it. Doesn't matter what the components are. And yeah, the DAC did bring a smile to my face. It's, it's very tactile, I love the little knob it's got a nice feature and uh, yeah, I can surely see it in my uh, arsenal one day. <laughs>